Even 50 years after his death, Bruce Lee still inspires millions of people around the world every year to start training and get into the best shape of their lives. But what if a completely average person took on the challenge of following Bruce Lee's legendary training and diet plan? Would they achieve the body and physical performance of a ripped martial artist like Bruce Lee, or would they crumble under the pressure? In this video, I'm going to be using my almost decade of experience as a personal trainer to answer that exact question. So by the time this video ends, you'll know exactly what you need to do to get a body like Bruce Lee's as quickly as possible. And the first step towards that goal is understanding that Bruce Lee's body and athleticism were just as much a result of his diet as they were his training. Bruce was very aware of this fact, and that's why he spent so much time experimenting, pondering, and ultimately crafting the perfect diet plan. One that could fast track even the most average person's transformation into a ripped athlete. Bruce Lee ate 3 to 5 meals a day with snacks and specific supplements mixed in throughout the day. And some of them were just downright bizarre by today's standards. He would start his day with a bowl of muesli or cereal to make sure he had some early carbohydrates to fuel his highly effective morning cardio workout. Then Bruce would whip up one of his special protein potions, which he would have two to three of every day. Something you need to understand is that Bruce Lee was something of a mad scientist in the kitchen. Like the Oppenheimer of food science, Bruce was constantly searching for new ingredients that could increase his explosive power, while hopefully keeping any explosive back-end results to a minimum. Long story short, if Bruce thought it could improve his performance, you bet your ass it was going straight into his mouth. The crowning achievement of Bruce's relentless quest for next level performance was his special protein potions, which he consumed two to three of every day, and they included a bevy of completely normal, mundane, everyday ingredients, such as protein powder, powdered milk, peanut butter, bananas, eggs, okay, pretty normal so far, eggshells, brewer's yeast, inositol, lecithin, and wheat germ oil. These are some pretty strange ingredients, but they were all included for a reason. This goes to show how much time and thought Bruce put into making sure his body got not only all the macronutrients, but all the micronutrients it needed to be able to Jit Kune Do some motherfuckers into another dimension. By the way, if you guys want me to, I'll buy a plane ticket to Asia, fly over, and follow Bruce Lee's training and diet plan for 100 days as a test to see if it works, and then make a video all about it. I'm a man of the people, so if you want to see that video, leave this video a like, subscribe, and comment Bruce100 down below. Okay, so Bruce's pursuit for performance didn't end with his shakes, because for lunch and dinner, Bruce would typically have a traditional Chinese meal prepared by his wife Linda, which was composed of lean meats, vegetables, and rice. Bruce believed that traditional Chinese cooking is the best for fueling athletic performance because of its focus on lean meats and high carbohydrate foods like rice, noodles, and veggies. But of course, with Bruce Lee being Bruce Lee, he needed to take the nutritional value of these meals to the next level. So for an added boost of vitamins and minerals, Bruce would routinely have his wife add fun organ meats like liver, brain, kidneys, and even heart to these and other meals. There are some serious health benefits to eating organ meats, but some cultures even even believe that eating the heart of an animal will bestow you with their strength and courage. So could it be possible that this was actually why Bruce was so mentally strong and courageous? It's impossible to say for sure. But speaking of energy, Bruce Lee was an avid tea drinker and would have multiple cups of strong black tea with a generous amount of honey throughout the day. The combination of caffeine from the black tea, which has been well studied for its performance boosting effects, and the fast absorbing carbs from the honey would have been amazing for keeping Bruce's energy levels high as he went through his grueling daily training routine. But speaking of performance boosting compounds, I've got something controversial to tell you. And be warned, it might even piss you off. But here is the truth. Bruce Lee was a massive juicer. He took the shortcut to his goal because he didn't want to put in the hard work necessary to get there. And of course, Bruce's goal that I'm referring to was getting in all of his servings of fruits and vegetables each day. That's right, instead of putting in the hard work of manually chewing up all of his fruits and veggies himself, he would take the easy way out and put them into his juicer and then drink the resulting liquid. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Wait, wait did you think I was talking about something else? But Bruce was definitely on some special supplements because aside from his his main meals, shakes, and snacks, Bruce would also supplement his nutritional intake in the form of supplements like Asian ginseng, royal jelly, and more. Of course, just like with his meals, he was constantly experimenting with new and different types of supplements. Between all the supplements, protein shakes with a questionable flavor profile, organ meats, and juicing, you can see how important it was to Bruce that he was giving his body a wide range of quality nutrients every day. But Bruce Lee paid just as much attention to the foods that he didn't eat as to the ones that he did, showing how carefully he thought about his diet. Bruce avoided alcohol, for obvious reasons, and also stayed away from foods with a lot of added sugar, and also foods 
that are made with refined flour, such as bread, biscuits, and baked goods, as he believed that these foods were nothing but empty calories. I actually don't fully agree with Bruce's stance on sugar and treats like baked goods. You can definitely build a ripped body like Bruce Lee's while enjoying some of these foods. You just need to be smart about it. But I'll be revealing the perfect strategy for an average person to get the body like Bruce Lee at the end of the video. But real quick, there's something that's pissing me off and I need to get it off my chest. It's the fact that fitness influencers are charging you 20 50 or even $100 for workout programs when they should be free and widely available for everyone. That's why I've partnered with the science-based training app, Boost Camp. They've got hundreds of free, high-quality 8-12 to 12 week training plans, many of which are made by top fitness influencers that you probably know. Plus, they have a slick user interface that makes following these workouts fun, easy, and satisfying. And I actually just released a 8-week training plan based off of Bruce Lee's training designed for beginner to intermediate exercisers. You can access the plan for free along with all my others by clicking the link down below and downloading Boost Camp. And when you're signing up, make sure to use code Demers for a free bonus and so that they know that I sent you. But make sure to do that at the end of the video because it's on to Bruce's training. The training plan that Bruce followed in his prime can be broken down into three categories. You won't be surprised to hear that Bruce Lee practiced his martial arts skills almost every single day. God, I would not want to be that heavy bag. But to avoid overtraining specific parts of his body, Bruce would split up his training days, so some were focused on upper body strikes and some were focused on lower body strikes. Splitting up his training in this way also let Bruce fully focus on perfecting the movement of the day, instead of having to constantly shift focus from movement to movement. Because it's as Bruce once famously said, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Bruce was also a big fan of using shadow boxing as a way to work on his footwork and to increase his precision and timing with his strikes without putting additional stress on his joints. To enhance the effectiveness of his shadow boxing practice, Bruce Lee incorporated a powerful visualization technique. With every punch thrown and kick delivered, he imagined facing an opponent who was blocking, dodging, and counterattacking. This mental practice not only sharpened his reflexes, but also deepened his strategic understanding of combat. But of course, you can't hope to become a master martial artist by just fighting heavy bags and imaginary opponents. After all, it's like Bruce himself said, a fighter who trains without sparring is like a swimmer who is never immersed in the water. So Bruce would frequently put his practice to the test during his hard sparring sessions. But unlike a lot of martial artists of his time, Bruce Lee wasn't a purist who believed that the only way to become a better fighter was just by doing fight-specific training itself. Bruce took his fuck I'm eating eggshells, wheat germ, and brain kind of attitude and applied it to his training. If there was a training method that could improve his performance as a fighter, he was open to it, no matter how unconventional it was. This leads us to the strength and conditioning portion of Bruce's training routine. Bruce knew that having the perfect martial arts technique and a body that was capable of generating large amounts of explosive power would have been useless in a fight if he didn't have the endurance to back it up. That's why six days a week, he would start off his day with some morning cardio, which he would do along with his morning flexibility routine. Three days a week, he would go for a three to five mile run, where he would start off slow, but then he would alternate his running speed between a light jog and a mild sprint, turning these runs into a kind of interval training. On the other three days a week, Bruce would practice his skipping as an alternative way to increase his cardiovascular conditioning, footwork, and agility. But Bruce's quest for an unlimited gas tank didn't stop there, as he also structured his weight training in such a way where he could increase his strength, build muscle mass, and increase his endurance all at the same time. He did this by using something called PHA training. PHA stands for peripheral heart action, and it's a form of circuit training where you alternate between doing upper body and lower body movements with very little rest in between. This way you can train one half your body while the other half rests, so you never have to take breaks while you wait for a specific muscle group to recover. Another big benefit of PHA training is that when you switch from working the upper body to the lower body or vice versa, your body is forced to rapidly move blood around the body, leading to a great cardiovascular workout and a great resistance training workout all built into one. Interestingly, Bruce actually learned about this method of resistance training while reading one of his favorite magazines, which was the Iron Man magazine. But PHA training wasn't the only form of resistance training that Bruce Lee learned about while pondering on his muscle magazines. In fact, during his prime, Bruce Lee would lift weights about three days a week, experimenting with all kinds of different lifting techniques. Back in 1964, after narrowly winning an important fight, Bruce Lee was on the hunt for something that could improve his martial arts ability. And since the all-in-one muscle building device, also known as the shake weight, wasn't going to be invented for another few decades, Bruce had to look for a more old school weight training strategy. And that's when he stumbled upon bodybuilding of all things which was rising in popularity at the time. He got in contact with a couple friends who were in the bodybuilding scene, and they helped him build this plan. He followed the bodybuilding route for a few years, and packed on a good amount of mass, but he ultimately felt that the extra bulk was slowing him down too much. 
for the amount of strength that he gained from it. But fortunately, he had a couple other tricks up his sleeve that could increase his power and strength output without adding a ton of heavy bulk to his frame. These tricks are called overcoming isometrics and speed training. Overcoming isometrics, which Bruce can be seen doing as he curls this bar that is chained to the ground, are performed by pushing or pulling against an immovable object as hard as you can for around 5 to 10 seconds. This allows you to activate your strongest muscle motor units, leading to large increases in your body's strength and power potential. Then speed training is a form of training where Bruce would take a movement, let's say a barbell overhead press for example, and then he would try to complete his sets as quickly as possible, meaning each rep would be performed with as much speed and aggression as possible. Similar to the overcoming isometrics, this rapid acceleration of the weights would engage Bruce's largest muscle motor units, leading to more explosive power. But all of this explosive power would have gone to waste if it wasn't for Bruce Lee's rock solid core. As you probably know, a powerful punch doesn't just come from a single arm. It's a full body movement, where the power is created in the legs and then transferred through the core to the upper body and then ultimately to some poor sucker's face. But if your core is weak and unstable, all that power from your lower body will leak out leading to a flaccid punch. How embarrassing. This is exactly why Bruce Lee would train his core every single day, doing movements like side bends, leg raises, sit-ups, and of course, his legendary dragonflies. So that's how Bruce Lee fueled and trained his body. He ate mostly traditional Chinese cooking, supplemented with sus protein shakes, a bunch of juice, and wacky supplements. He then practiced martial arts and trained core every day, did cardio six days a week, and lifted weights three days a week. So if a completely average person took on this program, would they go from looking like this to this? In theory, yes. In practice, almost definitely no. First of all, it's all too easy to get distracted by the flashy supplements and weird foods he was eating and getting tricked into thinking that these were the secret to his amazing physique. But in reality, about 80% of the reason Bruce's diet was so effective for him was because he was focused on eating a lot of lean protein, organ meats, a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, and healthy carbs, all while avoiding things like alcohol and sugary foods. Essentially, the core of his diet were just these healthy whole foods. Sure, supplements can and do help, but as long as your diet consists of a wide variety of whole foods like these, you don't need to be shoving 72 pills down your throat every day to see amazing results. Another thing you have to remember is that the martial arts were Bruce Lee's whole life. He played martial artists in movies, he taught martial arts to his students, and in his downtime when he wasn't training martial arts himself, he was researching ways to become a better martial artist. So Bruce not only had all the motivation in the world to train as hard as he did, but he also had a huge financial incentive as well. This meant that Bruce could afford to commit 4-6 to six hours a day to his training for years. It was literally his job and his biggest hobby as well. Plus, Bruce started training at the age of 12, so he was able to slowly get his body and mind accustomed to this insane volume of training. So my point here is that even if you quit your job, found a spouse that will quit their job so they can cook for you, sold all your possessions, lived out of a van or a very small shrub, and did all this so you could take on Bruce Lee's training and diet 24-7, you would still end up horribly injured if you didn't slowly build up your training intensity and volume over the course of years. So if you're new to training or have some experience under your belt, should you follow Bruce Lee's training routine? I would not recommend it. But luckily for you, you don't need to follow Bruce Lee's exact training plan to train like him and get similar results. You can simply use his time-tested training principles and create a training plan that's scaled to your fitness level. In fact, you don't even need to do that because I've already done it for you. I've created a free eight week training program based off of Bruce Lee's training, but I've scaled it to the fitness level of an average gym goer. You can access the plan 100% for free by clicking the link down below and downloading the free training app, Boost Camp. This is where I'm hosting the program. Remember to use code Demers when signing up for a free bonus and so that they know that I sent you. And all I ask in return is that you like the video and subscribe. Now, if you want to learn more about the muscle building process, you need to check out my video going in detail on Arnold's full old school training plan. So go check that out and I'll see you guys there.